Ansible playbooks are Ansible's orchestration language. It is in playbooks where we define what we want Ansible to do. It is a set of instructions you provide Ansible to work its magic. So for example, it can be as simple as running a series of commands on different servers in a sequence and restarting those servers in a particular order. Or it could be as complex as deploying hundreds of VMs in a public and private cloud infrastructure, provisioning storage to VMs, setting up their network and cluster configurations, configuring applications on them, such as a web server or database server, setting load balancing, setting up monitoring components, installing and configuring backup clients, and updating configuration database with information about the new VMs. Let's take a deeper look at how playbooks are written. Remember, all playbooks are written in YAML format, which is why we spent some time earlier getting our hands dirty with YAML. A playbook is a single YAML file containing a set of plays. A play defines a set of activities or tasks to be run on a single or a group of hosts. A task is a single action to be performed on a host. Some examples of a task are executing a command or script on the host, installing a package on the host, or performing a shutdown or a restart operation on the host. Let's take a look at an actual playbook. Shown here is a simple playbook that contains a single play named Play1. The goal of this play is to run a set of activities one after the other on the local host. Remember that the host you want to run these actions is defined at the play level. In this case, we just want to test on the local host, which is why it is set to local host. This could be anything from your inventory file. So basically, a play is what defines what action you want to do on what hosts. All the tasks listed under this particular play will be executed against those hosts, and those hosts could be any number of hosts, or in this case, it's just a local host. Next, we run a set of commands one after the other on the host. First, we print the date, then we run a script on the server, followed by installing the HTTPD package using the YAM module, and finally starting the web server using the service module. Now, if you don't understand what each of these tasks does exactly and how it is defined, don't worry, we are going to take a better look at each of these uh, in, in a few minutes. But for now, I just wanted to give you an idea on how a particular Ansible playbook looks. Let's look at this sample playbook format and try to relate it to what we learned in the YAML section earlier. I've made a minor change and split the list of tasks into two separate plays. The YAML file, which is our playbook, contains a list of two plays. This is noted by the dash. So the dash indicates that it is an item in the list. So the playbook is a list of dictionaries in YAML's terms. Each play is a dictionary and has a set of properties called name, hosts, and tasks. Remember, these are properties of a dictionary and so the order doesn't really matter. So even if you swap the position of name and host, it's still a valid play. However, this is not the same for tasks. The task, as you can see, is a list, as denoted by the dashes. Lists are ordered collection, so the position of entries matter. If you swap the position of entries here, we are instructing Ansible to start the web service first before installing the HTTPD service which is not a desired solution. So the YAML format is key while developing playbooks. You must pay extra attention to the indentation and structure of this file. The host parameter indicates which host you want to run these operations on. Remember, the host you want to perform these operations against is always set at a play level. 
Currently, this is set to localhost, which means that all these actions listed under the task is going to be performed on the localhost. You could have any host or group specified here, but you must ensure that the host or group is first defined in the inventory file we created earlier. The host defined in the inventory file must match the host used in the playbook and all connection information for the host is retrieved from the inventory file. Now, there is no hard rule to use all the hosts defined in the inventory file. You could choose one or multiple or a group or multiple groups from the inventory file in the play, but you really don't have to use all of them. Whatever host you have defined in the play, in the playbook, should be defined in the inventory file. Otherwise, it's not going to run. Let's look at what a module is. The different actions run by tasks are called modules. In this case, command, script, yum, and service are all Ansible modules. There are hundreds of other modules available out of the box. Information about these modules is available in Ansible documentation website, or you could simply run the command ansible-doc-l on your Ansible system. To get familiar with the basic playbook structure in the upcoming exercises, you simply need to know the command module. Later on in the next section, we will go through some other basic modules in more detail. If you look at the command module, you will see that you could simply specify the command you wish to run, in this case, date, and Ansible will execute that command on that particular server. Finally, once you successfully build the Ansible playbook, how do you run it? It's very simple. Execute the Ansible playbook command and specify the name of the Ansible playbook you just created. And that's it. If you do an Ansible playbook dash help, you will get to know more about some additional parameters available for this command. We will go through some of them in a later section. So go ahead and get your hands dirty developing some Ansible playbooks in coding exercises. We are just going to get you familiar with basic playbooks and playbook structure. The whole idea is to get you familiar with how a play is defined and what it is and how tasks are defined and to understand the difference between them. We will focus on more realistic use cases in the upcoming lectures, but for now, we will stick with real basics. So check out the upcoming coding exercises section and good luck. Hello and welcome to this demo. In this demo, we're going to see two ways of running Ansible. First, using the Ansible command, and then using the Ansible playbook command. Sometimes you may want to use Ansible for a one-off task, such as to test connectivity between the Ansible controller and the targets, or to run a command, say for example, to shut down a set of servers. In that case, you can get away without writing a playbook by running the Ansible command followed by the host and the command to reboot the host. We also used this Ansible command in the previous demo to use the ping module to test connectivity to the target servers. We will learn about modules in the upcoming lecture, but check out the syntax here. So this is an imperative style of execution. There are no playbooks involved. You're running separate Ansible commands for each operation. So this is not an ideal use case of Ansible unless you wish to use it for exceptional cases. The real usage of Ansible is with playbooks. In the previous lecture, we learned about playbooks. We will now use the Ansible playbook command to execute those playbooks. So that is a declarative approach. The playbooks can now be saved on source code repositories like GitHub and managed centrally. So remember, the Ansible playbook command requires you to develop a playbook. So let's jump into the demo. So I'm on the Ansible controller machine and I have a, a project a folder created named as project-1, 
this is a, a test project. Inside this, I have the inventory.txt file. This is the same file that we created in the previous demo. It has information about the two target servers, target1 and target2. Now we're going to use the Ansible command and see how, it, uh, how we can execute a module um, only by using Ansible command but without a playbook. So we're going to uh, run Ansible followed by the host name that we want to target. Uh, we could either do target1 or target2 or if you have a group as we learned in the inventory uh, lecture you can specify that as well. But in this case in the inventory file we haven't really created a group. However there is a group that Ansible creates by default and that's called the all group. And the all group simply means that it's a built-in group that Ansible creates and it has all the servers in our inventory file part of that group. So if you look at the inventory file, you won't see a group named all, but Ansible uh, creates it internally. And so both the target one and target two servers are part of that. Um, next in the command comes the Ansible uh, module. So we will use the dash M parameter and specify the module that we're going to use. Um, and the module is ping in this case. And that is followed by dash I parameter to specify the inventory file. Now remember, both the Ansible and the Ansible playbook commands require the inventory file specified through the dash I parameter. Okay, when I now execute it, it comes back with the uh, message that uh, the pings are successful and Ansible is able to establish connectivity to the target servers. So that's one way of executing Ansible um, using the Ansible command. We will now uh, look at the second way and for this we need to create a file, uh, the playbook file, and I'm going to create a playbook file named playbook-pingtest.yaml. Now remember your YAML files can be named either YAML as uh, with the extension YAML or YML, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to use the VI editor uh, to create the file. I'll start with a dash to indicate uh, the start of the first play and on the next line I'm going to add two spaces followed by the name um, and a colon so that's the uh, playbook uh, that's the name of the play and I will name it as um, test connectivity to target server so that's going to be the name of the play um, and on the next line again followed by two spaces I'm going to add hosts um, and in this case, host is going to be all. You can either have target one, target two, or any group, or the default group, which is all. And that is followed by tasks on the next line. Um, tasks is an array, so I'm going to start with a dash, and then followed by name. This is the name of the first task. I'm going to name it as ping test. And on the next line, I'll have the module uh, name, which is um, going to be ping. And the ping does not require any um, attributes, so I'm just going to save the file and exit. Now, if I list, I see that I have two files in the current directory, the inventory file and the playbook file. I can see the contents of the playbook file uh, with the cat command. To execute the playbook, I'm going to use the ansible-playbook command, followed by um, now, I don't need to specify the hosts here as I did it uh, for the Ansible command because I have the hosts specified inside the playbook. So I don't need that. I can directly specify the playbook name, um, which is playbook ping test. And this is followed by, as I said before, the inventory file information um, with the dash i parameter. Okay, when I now execute, you can see um, the play information about the first play and then the task inside the play and then finally a summary of the execution and the task for both the hosts is successful as you can see with the OK message so if you look at the output of the Ansible playbook command you can see that it's presented in a well formatted way with um, the play information the task that it run and finally the uh, summary however um, the output of the uh, Ansible command earlier uh, didn't actually give us any of those because it just gave us the result of the um, module 
execution. Well, that's it for this demo. Um, going forward, we'll see more examples and more complex playbooks. Thank you for your time, and I will see you in the next demo. Hello, and welcome to this demo. This is an optional demo where I'm going to show some tips and tricks in developing Ansible playbooks using an IDE. If you are very comfortable working with the VI editor, then by all means continue to do so. But when you start working with large number of files and playbooks, it may become a bit difficult to work in the CLI. I personally am an IDE person. I like to use a good IDE for development purposes as it helps me move around multiple files easily as well as integrate with version control systems like GitHub, etc. In this demo, I'm going to show how to set up a development environment using the free IDE tool called Atom, as well as how to uh, develop locally and sync your files remotely to an Ansible controller machine. So let's dive into it. So first I'm going to uh, download the IDE, the Atom IDE, and for that go to atom.io. Uh, when you go to this uh, landing page, um, you will have the option to download the version of Atom automatically based on your operating system. In my case, I'm using Windows, so I download uh, the setup file for Windows. Once downloaded, go through the installation uh, process, which is pretty straightforward and you'll have, an, uh, you'll have the Atom IDE installed. Once installed, um, open the Atom uh, IDE, and uh, um, this is the uh, IDE interface. I'm going to uh, open a new project, so I'm going to click on Open Project, and I have a folder created in my D drive called Ansible Demos-Exercises, so I'm going to select the folder, and so it opens the folder in my current window. Now, on my Ansible controller, um, I will also create a similar folder. So under my home directory, I'm going to create a folder called ansible-demos-exercises. Uh, so my goal is to develop Ansible playbooks locally on my Windows machine on the IDE, and then move them to the Ansible controller machine once I'm done with the development to execute the playbooks. So I have a folder created locally as well as a folder created remotely. In the local folder, I'm going to further create another folder. So I'm going to create a folder for each of the exercise. Um, I'm going to name the first one as um, exercise-0-pingtest. So the first exercise that I'm going to do is a ping test. Under that, I'm going to create a new file. Um, I will call that inventory.txt. And we've already created an inventory file earlier in one of the earlier demos, so I'm just going to pick that. So on my Ansible controller machine, I'm going to um, uh, print the contents of the inventory file I created earlier. I'm going to copy those contents and place it in this in this file. So I have my inventory file ready. Um, I will now create a playbook. I will call that playbook-pingtest.yaml. And inside this um, playbook, I'm going to create my new uh, play. So uh, the first play is going to be named check connectivity to target servers. And then the tasks um, are going to be the first task is going to be named as a ping test. And it's going to use the ping module. So that's a very simple uh, playbook right there. Now, if you see, um, the, from the IDE, I expect it to um, warn me whenever there's an error um, in the in the syntax or the structure of my YAML-based uh, uh, playbook. In this case, I'm going to make an error purposefully in the structure of my YAML file. So I'm going to move uh, the ping. I'm going to move the indentation of the ping line um, to the left a little bit. So this is actually wrong. And the way you test it is um, you can actually copy the contents of your playbook. And there's a site called yamlint.com. Uh, so if you go to this site and copy the contents of your playbook and paste it there and click on Go, it's actually going to do a quick check and tell you that there's something wrong. So there's something wrong around line 4 or line 5. 
Well, this is one way to do it, um, but there's an easier way, um, a better way to do it, uh, that is using a package for the Atom IDE. So if you go to Google and search Atom followed by YAML lint, you will come across this package called linter-js-yaml. This is the package uh, that does the YAML validation for us. And you can install it using this command called apm install linter-js yaml. This does not come pre-installed uh, in the Atom IDE, so you have to install it separately. So I'm going to open a command prompt. This is on my local machine where uh, the Atom IDE is installed. And then I'm going to run the command apm install linter-js yaml. It's going to take some time for it to pull down the package and install it. Okay, so the installation is complete. Once you install any package, uh, remember to restart your IDE. So I'm going to close my IDE and I'm going to start it again. Okay, so I've opened my IDE and as you can see, automatically it now uh, tells me or points me uh, to line number five and says that there's an error and the error message is bad indentation of a mapping entry. So it's identified that the um, the indentation on this particular line is incorrect and I have to move it to the right a little bit. And when I intend it correctly, the error message is gone. So this is very useful for me. Going forward, I will rely on this to verify the um, that the YAML files or playbooks that I develop are in the right structure. And you can use this too while developing um, playbook in the coding exercises section. Uh, you may come across uh, cases where uh, your uh, YAML file structure is incorrect. So you can um, use either the YAML lint site or this IDE um, to test your files. Okay, so I'm going to save that uh, file. Now I'm going to go to my Ansible controller machine and I will now move the files there. So basically I'm going to create these files that I created in the IDE. First, to start with the inventory file, I'll copy the contents and paste it um, here. Similarly, I'm going to um, create the Ansible playbook file, but there's something that I forgot in my playbook, which is the hosts entry. So I'm going to add the host entry before I copy the contents. Um, and then I'm going to copy the contents create a new file for playbook on my Ansible controller and paste the contents there. I will now run the playbook by using the Ansible playbook command and by specifying the playbook name followed by the inventory file. And as you can see, it runs successfully. What I just did was manually copy these files over, but that's not going to work well all the time. Uh, when I keep modifying the files uh, more regularly and when I work on more number of files, it's going to be a tedious task copying the contents over each time. And so we're going to use another package from Atom uh, to fix that issue. Now remember, uh, in my case, I'm using a Windows system with Atom ID on it. Um, and then I'm trying to move my files to the Ansible controller machine, which is Linux. And, a remote, and that is remote. In your case, if you're using the Linux system, um, and if Ansible controller happens to be the same Linux system that you were on, then you don't really need this functionality of the remote sync. Um, you could just install Atom IDE on your Ansible controller, and if you're comfortable working that way, you don't re really need to do this. But even if you're on a Linux system, and say, for example, your Ansible controller happens to be a remote system um, on uh, uh, in your lab environment or on VirtualBox, you could still use this uh, remote sync package to um, sync your local files um, to the Ansible controller machine. So it, it's useful either ways. Um, it's useful uh, where uh, when your IDE or is on your local workstation and your Ansible controller is a remote system. So if you Google Atom and uh, remote sync, you'll come across this Atom package. 
um, it's called remote sync package and you can browse through the documentation to see all of its features and its um, support etc um, so under the installation section find the command to run um, to install the package it's called apm install remote dash sync so i'm going to open my uh, command prompt and run the command to install the remote sync package once it's uh, completed successfully uh, close your ide and open it again and once it's back up if you now right click your root folder your project folder you will see a, a new option called remote sync um, and under that you have a configure option so that's what you should do first um, you need to configure the remote sync um, this opens up a form and here you're going to fill information about your remote system in our case it happens to be ansible controller so i'm going to put in the information about the Ansible controller, the host name, port is 22, the target directory, where do we want to copy the files to? So I'm going to um, use the same directory that I created earlier, which is ansible-demos-exercises. So put the complete path, the username to connect with, that's the OS boxes, and I'm going to give it a password, which is the osboxes.org password. I'm going to check the option called upload on save that way every time I make a change to my file and save it it automatically gets updated okay so I now have my remote sync uh, configured for my project uh, so if I now right click uh, my root uh, project folder um, and go into remote sync uh, I can see the option for upload folder um, you will see this option all the time, but remember to first configure it before you start using it. So if you've already configured, I'm now going to click on upload uh, folder and it's going to upload each file in my folder to the Ansible controller machine. And I can see the logs here in the bottom right corner. If I go to my Ansible controller machine and list the contents, I can see the new folder here. Um, there are, there are pro files that I manually created earlier. I'm just going to get rid of them. Um, and if I now go into the new folder, I can see the files that I created in my IDE. I can now run the Ansible playbook command with these files. And uh, the result is a success. Now I'm going to um, demo uh, another exercise um, for copying a file. So I'm going to create a new folder called exercise-1 dash copy and copy file and in this folder again I'm going to copy the inventory file so I'm going to copy the file uh, inventory file from the previous exercise and paste it here and in this folder I'm going to create a new um, file for a new playbook and I will name it as playbook dash copy file dot yaml in this file I'm now going to create or develop my playbook so the first play is going to be named um, copy file to target servers and uh, the play is for all hosts and then I'll specify the tasks the first task is going to be named copy file and this is where I need some help so I need uh, to know what the copy module does um, what are its properties how to use it and this is where I go to the Ansible documentation page look up for the copy module and once I find the copy modules um, it says that it is a f uh, it is a module that copies a file from local or remote machine to a location on the remote machine so that's exactly what I want uh, when I scroll down into the example section I see um, how to use the modules so all I really need is the source and destination so I just need those two properties so the uh, module name is going to be copy and it's it has two properties under it called SRC and destination source and destination so what is the source what is the file that I want to copy from my Ansible controller to the target servers uh, well let's go and uh, get that created so I go into my Ansible controller and I'm going to create a new file at temp um, testfile.txt. Uh, I will add some sample content to this file. I'm going to copy the location of the file and place it under the SRC section. 
Now, before I execute the playbook, I want to make sure that the file does not exist on my target machines. So on my target one, as well as on my target two. And um, you can see that there is no such file or directory, which is great. But the file does exist on my controller machine. Now in the IDE, I'm going to specify the destination. Again, I'm going to give the same path. So I want the file to be copied to the same path on my controller, uh, on my target servers. I will save that. Okay, so if I now go back to one directory and go in, I can see that there's a new directory, which is the directory that I created on my IDE. And if I list its contents, I can see the playbook that I just created, but I do not see the inventory file. Now, the reason for that is I copied over the inventory file from the previous uh, folder. And when you do a copy, the remote sync uh, package does not really uh, upload it. Um, you can either make a change to the inventory file and save it, and then it will upload the file automatically. Or in this case, you could just go to right click the file, go to remote sync and select upload file option. So now I have uh, both the files here. I will now run the Ansible playbook command to execute the playbook, specify the playbook name and the inventory, and we'll wait for it to um, finish execution. Now, as you can see under the task section, it says changed for both target one and target two. So that basically means the files were not there and it had to copy the files over. If I go to my target one server, I can see that the file is now there the same on target two. So the file has been copied successfully to the target servers. Um, if I now execute the playbook again, what would happen? Would it copy the files? Would it overwrite it? Or just leave it as it is because the files were there. Now, as you can see, the output this time says OK. So that really means that the files were already there and then it, it didn't have to do everything is OK and it didn't have to make a change or copy the files. So that's the difference between the first and the second execution. The first, it says changed. In the second um, execution, it says OK. So uh, that's the concept of idempotency in Ansible. Um, Ansible only makes a change if it has to. If it's already um, in the same state, then it doesn't really make the change. So we can really run the Ansible playbook as many times as we want. It's only going to make a change when there is a need. To run another test, um, what we'll do is we'll just go to the Ansible target um, 2 um, server. And we'll remove the file from that server. So we're only removing the file from the from target two. And we'll run the playbook now. And if you look at the result, it says it's okay for target one, but had but it had to make a change for target two. So the file was not there for target two, so it copied the file. Well, that's it for this demo. Thank you for your time, and I will see you in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.